The moment that changed my life forever. Philadelphia? Hello? This is Nicholas talking. Wow, that is amazing. I'm, I'm shaking right now. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you for that. Teen scholarship, $40,000 a year. Oh, Nico, you got the best scholarship out of all of them. That's insane for you, Pat. Oh my god. An Ivy insane. League. Hey guys, welcome back to the Dental Duo. My name is Nico and today I will be going over my application that got me accepted to UPenn as well as offered their largest dean scholarship. After posting our decision day reaction video, we received a bunch of questions and a bunch of people requesting I make this video. So here we are. So a little bit of history before we start. UPenn is one of the three Ivy League dental schools lined up next to Harvard University and Columbia University. And amongst them, it's one of the top dental schools in the whole United States and country and just some quick background on the actual scholarship this is not a scholarship you apply for and it's a hundred percent merit based so when you apply to UPenn dental and interview they consider you for the Dean scholarships and they will inform you on the day of your decision if you did receive a scholarship or not and there's actually four levels to the scholarship there's a 10k per year Dean scholarship a 20k per year Dean scholarship a 30k per year Dean scholarship and a 40k per year Dean scholarship so yeah those are the different distinctions and that is how you're considered for the scholarship you do not apply they just offer it to you. So now let's get into the juicy stuff. My stats. I'm a numbers guy, so we'll start off with the numbers. And a big disclaimer before I go through my application, I just want you to know I am not the smartest person. I have friends that catch on to lectures and topics quicker than me and they learn faster than me. And truly, I believe I got all my success through perseverance and just studying extremely hard. I'm not some natural genius. So if I can do it, you guys can do it too. So let's start off freshman year, my first semester. I was taking biology one calculus one and some other courses and I was nervous I was considering switching my major I was a bio major and I was considering switching to maybe engineering maybe business because I've always been naturally good at math but science has never been my cup of tea in high school I took biology my teachers were a bit demotivating and I just started undergrad really nervous and I didn't know if I was smart enough or capable of getting to where I am today but after extensive tutoring and going to office hours and really grinding I managed to get straight A's my first semester and going into my second semester I realized okay maybe this is doable maybe this is possible and I did the exact same thing I studied extremely hard I put 110 percent to everything I did studying wise into all my tests and I managed to get straight A's my second semester as well and this was a huge shock to me again I heard a lot of stories of people People dropping out and changing their majors and failing calculus two three times and so now my confidence is starting to grow a little but now I'm taking gen chem and I'm taking it in six weeks and everyone's telling me gen chem in 12 weeks is impossible much less six weeks you're gonna struggle and somehow after a six week intensive course I ended up getting straight A's on my third semester and my fourth semester and actually on my fifth semester there was a hiccup I got an A minus in physics two and in my sixth semester I also got an A minus in organic chemistry two However, these two A minuses played an extremely crucial role in my application, which I'll get to later on. My remaining semesters, as you can see, I ended up getting straight A's. I had a very strong upwards trend from those two A minuses, and everything was good in regards to my GPA. I ended up finishing with a 3.97 science and overall GPA, which placed me in a pretty comfortable position. And a mindset I had going into every single semester, starting from my first, was organic two is going to be harder than organic one. Physics 2 is going to be harder than Physics 1. So my mindset was every semester is going to get harder. So now I have to make sure I try as hard as I can to do as well in my classes. So when I do get to those super extremely hard classes like molecular genetics and biochemistry, I have a nice cushion on my GPA. And let's say I get a B or I get a C, my GPA overall will still be okay. Just because I made sure the semesters that were easier, I put 110%. So Moving on from our GPA, we have my DAT score. I don't have much to say about that besides I got a 23 AA, 24 total science. I studied eight weeks for my DAT. You can check out my video above to 
see how I studied and some tips and tricks that helped me achieve the 99th percentile score that I received. Speaking of the DAT, don't forget to use code DENTALDUO10 for 10% off your DAT Bootcamp subscription. Moving on from just the numbers, because at the end of the day, these are just statistics, they're just numbers. What makes you you is not your GPA, it's not your DAT score, it's your experiences. So starting off with volunteer, a big bulk of my volunteer was through mission trips. I participated in my first mission trip, sophomore year of undergrad in the Dominican Republic with an organization called Blue Missions. It was an eight day trip and we were building a gravity driven aqueduct for a whole community of people who had to walk three, four miles with buckets on their head every single day just to get access to clean drinking water. I had a phenomenal time and I strongly recommend you guys check out Blue Missions on Instagram or bluemissions.com and sign up for one of their mission trips. One of the best experiences of my entire life. And it was so good that I had to return. After my eight day trip, I fell head over heels and I was in love with Blue Missions and I applied to intern. And after an extensive interview process, I was selected to be one of the few interns who will lead the mission trips for five to six weeks at a time in the Dominican Republic. While on these mission trips, I created more aqueducts as well as created ventilated latrines for communities where multiple families would have to share one bathroom. And they really didn't have too much dignified sanitation, if I'm being honest. So we made sure to bring them that. And we worked alongside the Dominicans. They worked hand in hand with us every single day. We were trenching. They were next to us trenching. We were making cement. They were showing us how to make cement. And this internship actually received a lot of attention on most of my interviews. And they were very surprised that I went for five weeks. And it's something that I'm passionate about. And that is super essential because then you can talk about it. You can give your emotions and schools will see you did not participate in this activity just to check off a box. Aside from my internship, currently I'm actually on my way back to the Dominican Republic with Kathleen. We're both interning this summer, so stay tuned for maybe some videos or clips of that. Some more international work that I did in the Dominican Republic. I witnessed the kids in the Campo of Maluco playing with toys that were made out of trash. They were makeshift toys, they had a toy car made out of a milk carton and the axles were straws and the wheels were bottle caps. And they had had that car tied onto a string and they were having an absolute blast playing with it. But seeing that made me want to do more for this community. I returned and I hosted an independent toy drive to this community where with the help of family and friends, I raised over 250 pounds of toys and I took a flight to the Dominican Republic, kept in touch with the locals of the community and I held a whole toy drive for this community alone. Mind you, this was not with Blue Missions. This was just an independent toy drive that I wanted to do alone. It went phenomenal as you can see the photos above. This was such a great experience. I actually went back the following year and I did another toy drive, this time with my friend Carlos. He loved the cause and loved the idea. So he wanted to come with me the second time around. And we raised around 500 pounds of toys this time. We brought double the load of donations and we returned to Maluco again. So that would be all the volunteer work that I did internationally. Domestically, I also did a lot of volunteer work such as mobile dental clinics, Mission of Mercy events for multiple years, participating in freedom clinics with the University of Florida College of Dentistry, and so on and so forth. These domestic events were more dental related. However, I did do other events such as feeding the homeless, picking up trash with my local local pre-dental club and local beaches and so on and so forth. Now going back to those A minuses that I mentioned earlier, I told you they were crucial to my application. And the reasoning behind this was some other volunteer work I did was being a teaching assistant for organic chemistry one and two for over a year and a half. I personally did not feel like I fully mastered organic chemistry too. So I decided to try to teach it because I believe the best way you can learn anything in life is through teaching. If I can't teach you the material, clearly I don't know the material well enough and I have to to brush up on those areas and really solidify the gaps in my knowledge. So being a TA was something I could throw on my application. Yeah, I struggled on this class, but how did I respond from getting the lowest grade I've received so far? In addition, I tutored through a company called Knack Tutoring over 250 hours, and I tutored organic chemistry and physics too. Those were the two subjects I tutored the most. Do we remember the two classes I got A minuses on? Physics two and organic chemistry two. Although I tutored some other students and maybe some gen chem stats, maybe macroeconomics. Most of the bulk of my tutoring was through physics two and organic chemistry. And again, with physics two, I felt like there was gaps in my knowledge. So I decided to apply and tutor students because whenever a student asked me a question that I did not know, I would always make sure to get back to their question and answer it within a day. That ensured I was able to solidify those gaps in my knowledge as well as make sure those students that I tutored learned the material. And I was able to place this under volunteer as well 
because the first 50 hours of tutoring, I did not charge a student a single penny and I did not get paid a single penny. The remaining 200 hours, I still did not charge. However, I was getting paid by a sponsorship through my school to tutor students. So I was getting paid, they were getting free tutoring. It was a win-win situation. And if there's one thing I don't believe in is charging students for tutoring. I was that student that needed tutoring for a lot of my classes. I was that student that took advantage of my school's tutoring. However, if my school only had one day of tutoring a week, I didn't have the funds to get extra tutoring outside of school. So I made sure any student I tutored would be 100% free for them. Now moving on from my stats and my volunteer work, we have research. I wanted to get involved in research. However, I went through my university's homepage of research and I went through, I'd say 400 different research projects. I went scrolling page after page after page and there was not a single research project that stood out to me. And you know what I did? I did not reach out to these professors because I did not want to do an experience such as research just to check a box. I wanted to do research because I was passionate about the research I was doing. And so I said, you know what? Maybe for now research isn't for me. And it's funny because one of my bio elective classes, Intro to Animal Science, my professor was talking about his research and his research was based in Ethiopia and he was trying to create a beef jerky prototype that he can create in a primitive butcher setting. In Ethiopia and other world countries, access to refrigeration is limited to none and a lot of the meat ends up spoiling and they get sick to their stomachs because they have to eat meat that has been sitting out on the counter for days. He was talking about how he's trying to create a beef jerky in a primitive box that has a humidifier and a small area where with very primitive like tools these countries can get access to healthy and safe meat to eat. So after hearing about his research in one of his lectures, I pulled him over that same day and I told him, I don't care what position you have me as. I don't care if you have me as a dishwasher. If you just tell me to come in twice a week to create pet tone water or TSA plates, I don't care what it is. I want to be involved in your research. This is a project that I am passionate about. I love serving underserved communities. And this is something that I 100% want to help you out on. And after an interview, interview with him he realized him and I were on the same page and he said I start on Monday and I stuck with him for over a year until I graduated doing research and it was research that I enjoyed. I enjoyed taking down our biltong samples and measuring to see how much E. coli was remaining and it was just a project that I enjoyed and I was passionate about. So going back to what I said earlier, make sure you find things you're passionate about because these experiences are a lot easier to speak about when it comes to interviews. They're a lot easier to write about when it comes to your personal statement and your experience section. So make sure you're finding things that you enjoy and you're not just doing things to check a box. Moving on from research, we have shadowing and assisting. I was very fortunate to have an uncle who owns a practice. So most of my shadowing hours throughout the years were through him. Now, what I found very valuable about his practice was I had the opportunity to shadow an endodontist, an oral surgeon, as well as two general dentists, one who focuses on cosmetics. I was able to see a wide variety of dentistry and that's why I continued to shadow my uncle's office because every single day I learned something new. That was most of my shadowing. I also shadowed another general dentist as well as I did some virtual shadowing during the COVID era and during shadowing as well as after shadowing I wanted to get my hands on experience in the field of dentistry. So I started assisting mobile dental clinics, freedom clinics, mission of mercy events and other events where I could assist and I could suction and apply the air water syringe, cut suture ends and, and I could do some something that's not just sitting back and watching. I wanted to be hands-on and that was the next step I took, making sure I got some repetitions assisting. Now, on top of all the experiences I've mentioned, there's a lot of smaller experiences that I did not mention, such as being a member of three different clubs for most of my undergraduate career, getting dean's list, having a job, different accomplishments that I also included in my application. Aside from all that, I made sure my personal statement was not rushed. And although I won't go over my personal statement in this video. I will make a video in the future going over my personal statement, breaking down every single section. Moving on from my personal statement, we have my interview. Kathleen and I gave each other mock interviews. We pulled up each other's applications and I asked her, why do you take this class? Or tell me about this experience that you wrote here. And we really prepared each other. And I wanted to mention as interviews start to flow, if you need someone to give you a mock interview, message either of us. As long as we have Wi-Fi reception and we're not in the Dominican Republic in the jungle, we will be happy to give you a mock interview. So just DM us on Instagram at the dent duo, and we'll be happy to schedule your mock interview. That being said, my pen interview was one of my best interviews. Penn's interview is a two part interview. The first part is an open file interview. 
And the second part is a closed file interview. The open file interview, they're gonna ask you questions specific to your application. They know who you are before you enter the room. They know everything about your application because they have it right in front of them. The second part, the only thing they know is your name. And you have to impress them within that 30 minutes. During my closed book interview, my interviewer lost connection to the Wi-Fi. While he lost connection, I took initiative. I called the Penn Dental office and I told them to write on the note my name and my phone number. And I asked him to please give that note to the interviewer. I explained that he lost connection mid interview and he could give me a phone call to continue our interview through the phone or we can FaceTime if he'd like. And in addition, his profile on Zoom was saying he was reconnecting, trying to get back in. So I sent him a message. Hey, I see you're having internet issues. If you'd like, we can continue our interview through the phone. This is my phone number. And after five, six minutes, I received a phone call from him. And he said he loved how I took initiative. He said he received the message through the computer as well as the secretary brought him the note. He was super impressed. He said, rather than just waiting for me to connect back, you took initiative. And that is what we want. We want people who can come up with solutions to problems on the fly. And that's exactly what you did. And I think that might've also contributed to the scholarship which I received. With that said, I think I pretty much covered most, if not all of the important aspects of my application that I think really helped me not only get accepted, but get offered their largest scholarship. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. Our DMs are also open. We're more than willing to help and we try to answer every single question that comes our way. So like I said, feel free to leave a comment, make sure you like, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you can be notified when we come out with videos and good luck to everyone applying this cycle.